Good morning, everybody. It's Randy with Randy's RV Bible Study from Southwest Florida. How are you? Let's get into it. Uh, I'm in Galatians now. So I hope you've read through 2 Corinthians. That's where we were. And uh, moving into Galatia. Galatia. <laughs> Paul writing to in the book of Galatia, uh, to the Galatians, excuse me, about AD 55 or 60. And um, really... Uh, This has been called the Magna Carta of the Church. The main argument is in favor. Christian liberty in the opposition of teaching of the Judaizers. He's arguing with people that are going, trying to get the, the, uh, the, uh, the Christians <clears throat> uh, back to... Uh, well, he's defending the gospel against the Judaizing. The false teachers. We have false teachers here and uh, who are undermining really the New Testament doctrine of justification by faith, by spreading dangerous teaching that the Gentiles <coughs> must first become Jewish proselytes and must first submit to the Mosaic law before they could become Christians. So, uh, this, this, is, this is huge, y'all, but uh, Paul introduces his uh, defense. Uh, we establish the law of salvation by grace. Uh, though faith does not denigrate the law. Now, this is this is what I want to get into. It underscores its true importance by one providing a payment for the penalty of death, which the law required for failing to keep it, and by fulfilling an original purpose to serve as a tutor. <coughs> Excuse me, excuse a tutor to show mankind's inability to obey God's righteousness, uh, righteous demand. Uh, to drive and to drive people to by the Holy Spirit to Christ, giving believers now an ability to obey it. Now this this is really interesting. Why why couldn't we obey it before? We were working it out in our own merit. Uh, you know, it's not a it's not a, a, a merit, meritorious uh, work. It's never. That's not the ground for justification. Faith uh, is uh, is 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 not merit either, and it's not just a ground of justification. It's simply a channel uh, through which we receive it, and it is a gift. God has given uh, faith as a gift, as Ephesians says, "Faith is not of yourself; it is a gift of God." Uh, although people are required to believe. For salvation, even that faith is part of the gift of God. Just sit on that for a minute. It's, this is huge. Which saves and cannot be exercised by one's own power. God's grace is preeminent in every aspect of salvation. So let's get into what Paul says here uh, in Galatians uh, 1.6. He says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach another gospel to you than which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches another gospel to you, than that that you've received, let him be a curse. By the way, you receive the gospel. You don't accept it. <laughs> Jesus has accepted you just like you are right now. This is the great, the greatest thing ever. Now just receive it. For I do not now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I, if I still please men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. So, um, we'll get into some more there, but we're, we're here, here we're talking about, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about backsliding. Uh, that's where I, I went in first. I wanted to talk about backsliding and, uh, and I'm going to be coming back and forth to, I have some notes in my Bible and, and notes here. Uh, backsliding, I call it backsliding, the slippery slope. What is it? How do we get there? What causes it? What are we talking about when we talk about backslide? Why is it? Why is it now? If we if we've been forgiven, then what, you know why don't we just continue to live 
the way we once lived. <clears throat> and why do we have the power now when you didn't have the power before? These are all questions I asked. I don't know if you have any great questions to ask. Please, let's get into a discussion. You, you can uh, write me. You can comment. All I ask is that you be respectful. And if you're not a believer, great. L let's talk about this, okay? Well, righteousness, or I call it rightness. You know, you're right, you're right standing now before God. How can we be right standing before God when we're such sinners? So that's a good question. You know, we can't. <laughs> we could try all things. <laughs> we could be as good as we want. And that's not how we gain righteousness with God. There are some so-called good people by worldly standards. Uh, God calls our good works as filthy rags. See, we're not good. We have to come to him in humility, total humility. This, this righteousness has been accredited to us, and I pray, God, that you help me uh, deliver this. It's been accredited to our account. It's been a, imputed. It's a one-sided deal. It's been imputed. Christ's righteousness has been imputed. Uh, it's been assigned, ascribed to us. Christ's righteousness has been imputed to us. To, to give blame is imputing. Christ took our blame or credit to some person or cause. So that's what imputing means. He's It's like he's given us, like if you was to open up your bank account today and you where this money came from? Where does money come from? Somebody just gave you money, got into your account, gave you money, didn't even ask for anything. Just gave it to you. Wouldn't that be something? I'm going to check my account. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. God simply took his own righteousness. It's a one-sided transaction. God is righteous. He's the only one that's righteous. G Jesus lived a sinful life. And he accredited it. To, he accredited it accredited it, 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 it. He, he credited it to us as if it were actually ours now isn't that amazing <laughs> we believed and accounted for righteousness these words paul uses them in romans these types of words in romans 4 3 9 22 james 2 23 and galatians 3 6 romans 4 2 talks about abraham's faith and abraham believed god and it was, it was counted unto him for righteousness. It's a gift. It's not a payment. God doesn't owe you anything. And you cannot pay for your sin. You, you can't. We're sinners. It's a gift. Now, to the one who works, wages are not credited. When you go, when you go to a job and work your job, at the end of the job, I want my money. I did the work. Give me the money. This is easy to understand. This is not. Uh, it's not credited as a gift. The work. It's. That's an obligation. If you did the work, you see the difference. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God, God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited. As righteousness, praise the Lord. What does this have to do with backsliding? Well, these people are turning back to this old thing. They got some false teachers. They're they're, they're going back. And and uh, can we really backslide as Christians? Um, and I'm going to talk to you more. Let's let's get into what backsliding is, uh, and let's really define this term. We don't hear these terms. Repentance and hell. I'm going to talk about backsliding now. Jeez, Randy, you just talk about old churchy terms. Well, they're actually the words in the Bible. And uh, backsliding is reverting to sin and wrongdoing. So now you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is it's even worse than it's even worse than where you were at the beginning. Because in the beginning you were just worldly and living out your lust. But this now talks about you you're 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 reverting back to your old ways basically and backsliding uh reverting to sin and wrongdoing so what does it produce in us well it produces uh self-absorption uh, i'll give you some scripture hang in there all right 
Proverbs 14, 14, the backslider in heart, he will be filled with his own ways. <laughs> uh, but a good man will be satisfied from above. You see, the backslider is self-absorbed. Here's another one, Isaiah 1, for a last sinful nature, nation, a people laden with iniquity, a brood of evildoers, children who are corruptors. They have forsa they forsaken the Lord and they have provoked the anger to the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. So it's a cell that one of the one of the things that backsliding produces is is uh, self-absorption. It also produces religious indifference in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And we're talking about the end times there. We are in end times, I believe. And you'll see that even in this backsliding. Because uh, it's, it's, it's foretold that, that people will leave the faith and then Christ will come. So we're looking for Christ. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for my Lord and Savior to come. What about you? Unfit for the kingdom. Let's go there. If you, uh, well, yeah, you're, you'd be unfit for the kingdom. Um, but Jesus said, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus said that. So you put your hand to the plow. What are we talking about, the plow? You, you're walking as a Christian. Now you're turning back. You're not fit for the kingdom. So it produces in us bondage again, back to, we revert back to bondage. In Galatians 4, 9, which uh, we haven't got to, but now you have known God. Now, after you have known God, but now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and the uh, I can't see that or can't read that big literary elements to which you desire to be in bondage. So he's asking a question. It creates displeasure in God. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. It also, also gives us a lack of spiritual enthusiasm. Nevertheless, I have great uh, this against you that you have left your first love. You don't have first love. You're not enthusiastic about living for the Lord. You don't, you know. So the backslider, what it produces, it's it's reverting to sin and going back to wrongdoing. What are the causes? Uh, I don't want to be a backslider. Do you? Let's look at the causes, okay? Uh, causes which produce backsliding. One of them is an absence of spiritual leadership. I don't know if any of this is resonating with you. <laughs> If you've been a backslider, I have, but if anything's resonating with you with this, where we are at church, and I'm talking about the church, you, the church, the church at large, the American church, the church in the world, the church, the church is falling is what the church is doing. And uh, they were falling here, but we are in moral decay. We live in a, we live in societies, plural, I guess, that are morally decadent. We they're just gone to the they gone to hell basically. So what are the causes? Well, absence of spiritual leadership. They turned aside quickly in Exodus of the way which I commanded them. They made for themselves a molded calf. All of a sudden, Moses is not there to babysit them and then well we gotta have something to worship so we're gonna make ourselves a golden calf and there's so much to be said in that and they worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said this is your god little g o israel that brought you out of the land of egypt not god who took them out of egypt but this is your god now we're gonna sign uh the, they're imputing and they're signing this calf as their god when the God of Israel, the Lord brought them out of Israel and did all the miracles he did. Now they're assigning a golden calf. That's what's going on in backsliding. There's idolatry there. So uh, there's an absence of spiritual leader. This is the causes. Evil associations. 
uh, in First Kings, for it was then that Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods. <coughs> Solomon was married to, uh, excuse me, I'm just allergy central here. Simon, uh, Solomon, not Simon, King Solomon was married to, uh, had a thousand women. I don't know, 700 wives, 300 concubines, I believe, uh, was the number. And um, they turned they turned him to other gods, see. Uh, you got to be care- bad, uh, bad, <laughs> what is it? Bad character corrupts good character. No, uh, but well, bad company corrupts good character. I think I said that right. So the company you keep, you know, that's what it should have been. Uh, so what are the causes? Absence of spiritual leader, evil association, the company you're keeping, uh, worldly success, worldly success. Our, our friends in the uh, uh, charismatic church, they're all about worldly success. Well, my Bible tells me that worldly success is a uh, preeminent to a fall. Uh, they, it, it turns your heart disloyal and did what was right in the sight of the Lord, not what was right in the loyal heart. Worldly success. They, uh, they turned back and acted unfaithfully to their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. Bow. Uh, those turned back and uh, from following the Lord have they don't need to because they have worldly success now, and those the Bible says that uh, whoever loves the world the Father is not in them for the world and all of its lust are passing away. If you love the Lord you don't love God. If you love the world you don't love. Sorry, if you love the world you don't you don't have the love of God is not in you. The Father is not in you. The world loving the world worldly success is a trap. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for you that believe, well, we should just be, this is not, you know, blessings come in so many, I could, that's another sermon. Blessings come in different forms. But we have a reward. We have heaven. Um, uh, do we live there now? No. Yes, we do, actually. We are living there now in our, this is eternity. We're not waiting for eternity. We, we're we living in eternity now. Why? We're saved. We're living as kingdom dwellers it, this isn't your home if you're getting too comfortable here it, trust me this is going to be a problem for you worldly success is a problem uh this is uh these this is what what the causes i'm just telling you the causes emptiness of life when an unclean spirit goes out of a man he goes in dry places seeking rest and he finds none and he, he goes well i'll return back to the house which i came from and when he comes he finds it sweat and put in order and he goes and he takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself emptiness you can't be empty you need to be filled with the holy spirit you, you, jesus says you must be born again there's no other christian i'm gonna harp on that uh, till i die there's no other christian there's a born again christian and you need to be filled with the holy spirit Another one is a lack of spiritual insight. These are the causes of backsliding. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit. They are life. The flesh doesn't profit. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the world, the world, it's all passing away. Why are you so worried about it? Uh, why are you so worried about it? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew six thirty three says. Uh, from that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more in John 666 is that 666 okay for some have already turned after Satan the love of the world uh, the love of the world is, is is the last one on my list for what are the causes of backsliding loving this world Loving your life, loving the world um, is anti-Christian. It's anti-Christian. Oh boy, how do we now have, my question is, how do we now have the ability to obey Christ? How do we, how do we gain this ability now? We didn't before. We were disobedient rebels. And now Christ, because of Christ's atoning work on the cross through our faith, when we trust in Christ, Christ's death gives us uh, grace and the forgiveness and the payment has been paid, now reconciling us back 
to this relationship where the law in itself was powerless to do. The law couldn't establish that. That the Israelites had killed, I don't know how many calves and bulls and followed the law. It doesn't establish relationship. It doesn't, God, it doesn't establish forgiveness. God granted uh, mercy and it empowers us through the Holy Spirit to live in obedience. It's, it's an, it, we've been empowered through His Spirit. We are reconciled to God through Christ's death. Shed blood on the cross. Repentance. Here's that word. And for, we're turning away from our sin because we're so grateful. We're so grateful. Here's some quotes I found about obedience and and how, you know, we. that's just my question. You know, how, how did we go from not being able to obey to being able to obey? Well, it, it really it boils down to uh, a sim- simply loving God. But listen to some of these other description of obedience. Uh, this one from Greg, Gregory of Sinai. Obedience is the medicine giving life to those who drink it. The knife which one cuts cleans the festering wounds. Uh, this is what Anthony the Great said. For just as it would turn, it would be unseeming not to thank phys- physicians for curing our body, even when they gave us bitter and unpleasant remedies, so it would be to remain ungrateful to God. See, we're grateful and thankful for the gift. Once you listen to the gift that he's given you, it's not of yourself. It's a gift. He just, he just forgave us while we were sinners. We don't deserve it. There's nothing you could do about it. He imputed righteousness to us. He accredited to our account righteousness, where we were just totally, de- uh, totally, our balance was negative. We were, we were totally at a negative, negative balance, pretty deep in debt. God has reconciled us through Jesus Christ and has imputed righteousness unto us. If you know God loves you, if you know that God loves you, you should never question a directive from him. Henry Blackaby says, and he goes on to say, God's commands are designed to guide you to life's very best you will not obey him if you do not believe him. Trust him. And most importantly, love him. You cannot love him unless you know him. Do you know Jesus Christ? Do you know the Lord? Do you realize that you're a sinner? Have you received his forgiveness? Not accepted it. It's not about accepting it. It's about receiving his gift, his free gift of forgiveness John 14, 15, Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commands. For it is the love of God that we keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. All right, conclusion, backsliding, back to backsliding, back, 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 back to backsliding, backsliding. Oh, backsliding is a slippery slope. Falling away. <clears throat> backsliding is falling away it is aka committing apostasy yes folks I said it Randy said it here it's committing apostasy it is a process by which an individual who has converted to Christ to Christianity <clears throat> reverts to pre-Christian habits and laps or falls into sin folks I, and I, I don't know what to say. Christians, you're living in pre... You're not... You're living in apostate. You're living as an apostate. If you are continuing to live with someone and have sexual intercourse with them and you're not married, that's fornication. If you're smoking weed and drinking and getting drunk, you're a drunkard. If you're stealing lying... I mean, you're living in, in a condition of... Uh, of backsliding, of, of apostate, you're living in sin. That's not how Christians live. Well, Christians, we're sinners. We do sin. I know, I got you. We wrestle with sin. We struggle with sin. Doesn't mean that we that that's where we stay. We have the power 
to not live in sin any longer. We have the power through Jesus Christ. Not only his shed blood, his mercy, and his forgiveness, but we don't get, this is where the church is all mixed up. Our lines are blurred. I'm sorry. We, it's like, well, I have grace. I have grace. I have forgiveness. I can do whatever. Doesn't, there's no power in your life. There's no way that you're going to exercise, uh, you're going to say that that's right and, and live in sin. Practice sin. We don't practice sin. We should feel bad about it. If we are sinning, if we do sin, lose our cool, lose our temper, you should be convicted and then you should repent. And God is there and he, he, this is how we're changing, ever changing. We're growing in Christ. You're not growing if you're going back to your old ways. Well, I'm saved. I'm cool. I got it. I got my fire insurance as they used to call it in church. Uh, it's not fire insurance. That's not loving God. It's a process where I watch an individual who has converted to Christianity and reverts back to Christian, Christian habits and lapses and falls into sin. When a person turns from God to pursue their own desire, apostasy. The Greek word is apostasia. It's a word that has two words coming together, which means to stand away from or to abandon. You abandon, deny, it's more than... It. It's to abandon one's faith. It's deeper than denying faith. It isn't this, I deny Christ, I renounce Christ. That's not what this is saying. It's even worse. Why is it worse? Because you're falling away from faith. The word emphatically suggesting, and I'm being emphatic with you, a complete breakdown of morals, ethics, and spirituality. And that's where the American, this is where I preach, that's where the American church is at today. I don't know about the rest of the world, but the uh, it's... It, a, a breakdown of morals. There's no morals. There's no absolutely everything is okay. We have gay preachers now. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> doesn't make sense. I'm sorry if you. I'm sorry. It doesn't make sense. Uh, I'm, I get to preach and I get to you guys. Yeah, uh, I'm out here having a good old time in my RV every night with women. That ain't what is happening. But that's what's. That's that's what's going on in the world. Uh, Paul writes, the day of the Lord will not come unless the falling away comes first. Praise the Lord, we're coming to the end of this. Falling away, not only to abandonment, but it is, it's not just of an intellectual, intellectual belief, but of morals. It's a falling away from morals and the love that characterizes Christians. Backsliding, the Spirit expressly says in the latter times that some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. It's doctrines, doctrine of demons going on. It's demonic is what's happening. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. For the time will not will come, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desire, because they have itchy ears, will heap up for themselves. <laughs> Teachers, I don't want to hear that. I, want, I don't want to hear your message, Randy, of repentance. I don't want to hear about hell. I, don't, I want to hear about love. Love is love. Love isn't love. God is love. Love isn't love. That doesn't even make sense. He just loves everybody, no matter what they're doing. He's imputed righteousness to the believer. He, he, <laughs> I'm going to go on and on, right? So they've heaped up for themselves teachers and they turn away from their truth and aside to fables. That's what the Bible says. No ears that don't want to hear. I don't want to hear the truth. Because why? Because men love their sin. That's why men love darkness. That's it. We love our sin. We drink sin. Like it was water. Billy Graham said, I believe that a tremendous battle, isn't in 2019 before he died, is going on in the moral realm. Satan working through society's obsession with sex. There are many who once walked close to Christ, who knew the sins forgiven, who even carried the influence of thousands of people who fell into the ancient temptation of Satan. This is the same old, same old, same old. There's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Our society is, I can't, I don't even know how. 
if I was a young man, and I, I just don't even know how a young man would make it. I, I see things on Facebook, and I just, I'm shocked, and, and I am tempted, but I didn't have, I'm not falling into temptation, but the temptation is all around us. Sexual, does the, I can't believe how. Well, I guess I can believe because the Bible says that this is all going to happen. I can't watch movies anymore. I can't. It's it's really difficult to. Uh, I'm not going to lock myself up in a room. We need to go out there. Uh, I don't have evil associations, though, but I want to bring people to Christ. Christ is the answer. Christians, you're, we've walked away from the Lord, and it's no wonder why. Uh, we, it was such a blessed, maybe that's what it is. This is the same old thing that's happened over and over and over again. You know, the Jews were blessed, and then they turned their back on God, and then it was judgment. We are in judgment now. Uh, I believe that to be true. John MacArthur has said that we're in a judge. We're in judgment now, uh, America. Uh, I hope we wake up. But but more importantly, and I pray for the country, pray for the leadership. But more importantly, what about you? It's about you. Where are you at in your walk with the Lord, Christian? Have you? Are you in backsliding? Are you a backslider? Are you have you walked away from your faith, abandoning the faith and your morals? And uh, have you walked away from what God is saying? Do you love the Lord? If you love the Lord, you do what He says. That's what Jesus said. Made it just so plain. Maybe you're listening to this episode right now, and you, you know you know what I'm talking about backsliding. You just know that you're a sinner, that you've come to that realization, and you want to be a Christian. Well, all you, all you have to do is receive His gift. You have to. That's a great place, and you're at a great place if you're convicted of your sin and you want change in your life. Then receive His gift of salvation. Receive His gift. He paid the price for you. He's done. The 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 the, the, the sin debt has been paid. Your debt, my debt, has been paid. He's imputed righteousness to your account. All you have to do is receive that. And you must repent. You must repent. Acts 30, uh, Acts, sorry, Acts 1730, God commands all men to repent. Now, God commands a lot of things. Whether you do it or not is up to you. He has a whole host of commandments. Ten of them, which are pretty, pretty sound, to be honest, of, if you want to live life and have a great life. But you don't, you're not forced to doing them. See, God commands all men everywhere to repent. He doesn't want anybody to die and go to hell. Well, I can't believe in a God that sends people to hell. He's not sending anybody to hell. He truly isn't. In fact, he didn't even create the lake of fire and hell for, for, his, for people. He created it for demons and Satan. He's dealing with an enemy that he, a formidable foe, that is also chosen. See how God's creation has chosen not to abide by the Creator and His commands, His rules. His rules are not burdensome. If you want a light load, it's follow Christ. If you want to live and live in eternity forever, you, this is how you do it. You, you receive His forgiveness. For you Christian that's, that's living in apostate right now, that uh, this is not the way to heaven. Um, it isn't. Uh, then you, you would have to tell me why Jesus says uh, the, the sexually immoral, immoral, the greedy, the drunkard, the liar, all those who have their place in the lake of fire. Are you just saying that's somebody else? Or is that ascribed to you? Because if you, if you love the Lord, then you keep his commands. And I'm talking to the Christian now. If you're not a Christian, then receive his gift today for everlasting life. If you're a Christian and you need prayer right now, you're living an apostate life. You want me to pray for you? I mean, I'm nobody, but two more together. There I am in the midst of the, I will pray for you and I will, well, let's talk about it. You, just the fact that you'd be asking for prayer says a lot. James 5, 16, confess your sins one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And I pray for healing for our country. I pray for healing for you. Write me if you're going through, if you're having addiction, you're addicted to porn. That has just become rampant. I mean, I, uh, the, we're, we're in trouble. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's a great thing knowing that the apostate is here. 
the great apostate, I think, is here because that means our Lord is close and he's coming. But that's why I'm doing these messages every day. It's because the Lord's coming. And I don't want anybody to miss out on that. And uh, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to miss out on heaven. There's no reason why you would go to hell, really. Uh, not, I mean, because how much more can somebody do for you that forgive you, give you mercy? And if you realize that and who you are, if you realize what he's done for you, it, you will fall in love with Jesus Christ. I guarantee it. You realize where you're at. And you say, you're not, you're not going to make it on your own. He's going to open up the book and your name's not going to be found in it. There's only one way to get there, to get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm telling you how to do it. Uh, if you come across this YouTube message and Christians aren't around here, don't believe the lie. I don't know what they're going to be telling you, but uh, the rapture has happened and uh, you'll need the Lord. But you'll, you'll, need to, uh, you'll need to go through a great... Uh, you'll, you'll need to be martyred for your faith at this, that point. But don't wait till then. You don't have to wait till then. Receive his love today. Receive his gift of forgiveness. Receive it. Call out for, cry out for mercy. That's where, you, that's where you're at. I need mercy. He's ready to give you mercy. He's ready to forgive. He died for you. All right, that's enough. I love you. And more importantly, Jesus Christ loves you to death. Literally loved you and loves you to death. All right, God bless. Hopefully, we'll, I'll see you again. Backsliding the slippery slope. God bless y'all.